Parliament. A good friend of mine, that some of you might know as the anti-terrorist. Um, yeah, thank you. He deserves everything. Yeah. Um, he told us a little while ago that the members of Parliament were actually a comp company. Now, I've... I was really, I suppose, in a lot of ways, when I look back at it, cringe. Because I thought, well, you know, I was asking questions. I could see this stuff. I, I was asking questions. I'll, I'll tell you how this came about, right? That screen show was actually put together by a friend of mine and myself after we've had smoking sessions. And this was in his flat in St. Albans. And he would be actually be stood in there that he'd actually tell you because we had such a giggle doing it. Because we were playing with the constructs of words. And it was that's what got grabbed my interest was the words and the way that the words are put together. And then he said to me, Well, we found this out. And another, another very dear friend of mine who I haven't seen for a long time, but he's the anti terrorist. I know him really well. Yeah. He was actually at one of my talks, which was, this is hilarious. He <laughs> was <laughs> he sat in the audience and I said, who do you reckon the anti-terrorist is? And there's someone piping up, David Icke. And there's someone piping up, he was cracking up. He was sat in the audience with him. And he's just cracking up. And mate, no one picked up, it was him. I, you, it, it, I, won't, I won't say his first name. I can't, there's a reason, because it's it, it, because of his job. Um, <laughs> he's a Hollywood actor. No way. That's all I'm saying. But he's a Hollywood actor. That's absolutely. Well, I won't lie to you. I don't like He's a Hollywood actor. Um, when I was talking to him, I he was very involved in commercial redemption. I don't know if you know this. You might not know this, but he was involved in commercial redemption with a couple of other guys. And I got invited to a, um, a meeting in I can't remember where, where we were. Well, sure, it was Nottingham. We were up in Nottingham, and me and Richie went up. And I sat in this, and I was invited, and the you know, there were like 500 quid for the weekend. You know, and I sat there, and what I was actually witnessing, and I sat very quietly, sat in the corner, uh, and I just sat, and I saw very, very desperate human beings that would have struggled to find 500 quid, but they found it. And they were being given information that they didn't comprehend, they did not understand the stuff. And it was being given too quickly. There was no stop points, there was nothing. This was dum dum and you know, and I was puzzled. I didn't know what the hell I was watching and listening to. It was distressing. So at the at dinner time we went out and got something to eat. And I was standing outside having a fang and the yeah, anti-terrorist, as you would know, came out and I was speaking to him. And I said, and I, I was very honest with him, and I said, I am just seeing a lot of desperate people who haven't got a fucking clue what you're talking about. And he said, well, we are trying to do it. And I said, well, really? And I could see he was very, very uneasy with what he was doing. It was, there was a moral issue in him. He was very uneasy. He <laughs> 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 is, yeah, he is. I haven't spoken on for ages. That's Fucking vain of society. What I picked up on was this moral issue that was going on inside him. And after we, we spoke, he went back in and he was doing a presentation with his two. Now, the other two fellas, I didn't really know that well. So, I didn't, unbeknown to me, the objective was for me to put this stuff on TPC. That was the objective. I didn't know that at the time. What he was basically going, we're going to use me to use TPC as the platform it is to out there, obviously, what they want to do and to get more. More <laughs> people in with you know to, to, to pay their 500 pounds because if you work it out, if you've got an average, you've got 20, 20 of them there, 500 pound a hit. You know, you don't, I don't need to do the maths for you. That's a fucking good weekend's work, isn't it? Seriously, that's a good weekend's work. I got offered 40,000 for a weekend's work. This was about three years ago. I got offered 40,000 pounds for, for one weekend's work. And that was to tell leading businessmen, businessmen all the loopholes I know about. All the legal loopholes I know about. Because from the age of, well, I'm funny enough, we'll talk to this about, from, from the age of about seven, I worked out very, very quickly how things were structured and how you get around things, how you don't have to do it. And, and there's other ways and bits and pieces. 
And what I used to, I realised that there was a form of authority that you couldn't back, even though I wanted to back it, but I did realise that that didn't stop you. You could bend rules as long as you didn't break them. And I worked that out very, very quickly as a kid. Um, so what I started to do is I started to look at legal loopholes some years ago, and I discovered tons of them, absolutely tons of them. And then I decided that I had this moral dilemma in me. Yeah. If I had my hammer, <laughs> this is where the fucking the autism will come in. You see? Right. So I had all these legal loopholes that I was dealing with, and then I had a moral dilemma. Now I've been off at 40 grand, and 40 grand will go a long way in my life because of the simplistic life I lead. 40 grand is going to go a long way. But then I'm going to be giving them information that's going to allow them to rip you off even more. Mm. I can't do that. Also, I can't do it. You know? All my. Um, I'd like you to watch a little clip from a, an online buddy of mine, a man who has a great deal of my respect. Uh, he says some things here which, with which I, I agree strongly and some things with which I do not agree at all. Um, but we'll, we'll, uh, it's the anti-terrorist and I'd like you to take a little short boo at some of this. Hello friends, I am the anti-terrorist. I hope that you all got to this meeting of the minds safely and without incident. And I hope that you will all enjoy the next few hours or the next day that you spend together in sharing these ideas and concepts. Looking around you now, you can see how fast this movement is growing. Or not, as the case may be. I hope there's more than a handful of you. Unfortunately, I cannot be there. I'm not in the country at the moment. My respect goes out to the organizers. It takes a great deal of courage and hard work to get something like this together. I know from my own personal experience. As you're going through your curriculum today, I hope you'll consider the nature of what a free man on the land is and how it pertains to commerce and your engagement in this activity. Commerce is here. It's been here for thousands of years. Those of you who came to this meeting today who have already filed your affidavits, no doubt have gone through at least five or six avenues of commerce just to get there, whether it be buying petrol, using a credit card or cash, getting a train, paying for food. See, commerce is all around us. There is no escape from it. It is what it is. I would advocate that you learn to navigate the seas of commerce as opposed to jumping ship. It's a very lonely, wide, deep ocean out there. And unless you're on a ship, unless you're sailing it, and unless you're in control of it, you don't have a lot of options, in my opinion. So my advice to you is to reconsider the free man option. Reconsider leaving the society. Reconsider relinquishing your national insurance number. You guys who are planning on checking out of the system, my question to you is how are you going to get your gas and your electricity and your water? These utility companies have a monopoly and they refuse to contract with you on a private basis. They need your person to be able to give you those things. And you need your person to get them. So unless you're going to live in the forest and use the methane escaping from your dung heap or your compost pile, my recommendation is that you use your person wisely. I hope you all have a wonderful, educational, inspiring day and that you all leave from this event more empowered and more knowledgeable than when you came. Thanks for listening. The anti-terrorist position is the only way to go here and buy things is with their permission. And if you don't have their permission, you must leave the house. And you must leave the, the whole island, the town. You must go live out in the bush. I'm a free man on the land. I've got the right to engage in commerce. I'm not going to live out in the bush. And anything the child can do with permission of their nanny, of their war, of their, their, their parent, this guy can do without any permission, just as lawfully. So his position that you should keep your, your person 
Otherwise, you have to leave. You, otherwise, you don't get the benefits of commerce and you have to go live in the bush. All three of those points are completely wrong. So you're not jumping ship by becoming a free man on the land. And he makes reference to society. And he says, well, keep your membership in society. But again, I got to say, hey, T, you, you disappoint me. What's the name of the society you suggest that they maintain an association with? Can you tell me that?